Super Talk 99.7 WTN. I warned you it was a loaded show today. 135. Thank you for being with us. We'll get to your calls and your commentary on the Members Nutrition Super Tax line on the way on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. You see on Super Talk TV in our studios, we have Representative Scott Zepicki in his normal place on these Thursdays to give us a legislative rundown. Hello, Scott Zepicki. Good afternoon, everybody. And we have on the line with us, as Scott is well aware, we've got a very special guest in the form of Speaker of the House Cameron Sexton, who is joining us uh, to talk about the General Assembly, how things are going mid-session, and what we can expect over the coming weeks. Um, Cameron, good afternoon. Good to talk with you again. I hope you're well, sir. It's good to be here. Thank you. It's a gorgeous day outside. I hate that you're in the studio. Uh, well, I, I hate that I'm in here, too. Maybe we, I've, I've been begging them to let me do some remote broadcasting from the roof. Uh, they've yet to uh, they've let yet to allow it, Cameron, but I'll keep you updated. Uh, well, we'll welcome you in Crossville, and you can come up and play around the golf. Let's do it. Oh, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna take you up on it, Cameron. He invited you, not me. No, I don't blame him. <laughs> I mean, can, but Scott. exactly, Scott. <laughs> uh, Cameron, let's start with the obvious. I mean, uh, clearly the uh, the bill that's getting the most attention in the House and the Senate, obviously, in two uh, separate pieces of legislation, as you well know, uh, is the uh, the Freedom Scholarship Fund. Uh, it, it's commonly referred to as a parental choice bill. Uh, give us your individual assessment of the legislation and then your broad assessment of uh, where it's at in the House of Representatives. Yeah, so I mean, I think what we're trying to do in the House is we're we're providing freedom to parents to make the best decision for their child, um, regardless of their income level. And, and so using their tax dollars and we believe that the parents should be able to um, be able to have the opportunity to send their child to a school if they want to, whether that's public or private. We're setting up a scholarship at the same time as we're trying to give uh, parents the freedom to make that choice for their child. We also want to improve the freedom in the classroom. We, we think that in the house uh, that we're way over tested in the classroom, the mandated testing that we have is really decreasing the amount of instruction time. Um, and so we're trying to find the right balance in the classroom to increase instruction time, but main, maintain a level of accountability. Um, that will continue to make sure that we, we have the results that we need, um, but it would also allow us to allow public schools to comp- compete with private. And so our bill is about freedom and, and, uh, on both sides. And so that's where we're hoping to get to, and, and hopefully we will. You know, I think we've uh, – there's a couple issues we still got to work out with the Senate. You know, I think, you know, on their side, our members have a issue with, the open enrollment piece and it being a backdoor mandate that may have the potential for lawsuits. We're trying to, uh, to understand that better. Um, I think there's also members who on on their bill, they still have kept in the homeschoolers and those who um, would be illegal immigrants who'd be here could use the scholarship money, which obviously the house version doesn't. So we're, we're trying to work through those and understand their perspective. And then on their side, I think that the feedback we've gotten from them is, uh, some senators do not feel like that uh, we over test and that the amount of testing is correct. Um, and so we're trying to work through those issues with them and give them a, an understanding of what we're thinking and why we're thinking. Uh, do you believe that the schism that currently exists will be repaired before the votes happen in the individual bodies or and, and explain to us and explain to me, really, Cameron, how it works if that's not the case, if the House and the Senate pass two different versions of this legislation, how we get them on the same page? Yeah, no, I mean, it's a great question. You know, we hope we don't have to go to conference because um, uh, that's really not where you want to go on a bill of this magnitude. We want to try to work it out, and we've been trying to work it out. Um, we're willing to sit down with the Senate and have those conversations and and. But at the same time, we, we feel strongly in some of the stuff we do, and we, we'd like to have some openness on their side. I'm not saying that they're not, but to have the same openness that we're going to give them um, and, and work towards a solution. And we think it's important for our state. Um, but it's really not something you want to go to conference uh, about. You know, there's a possibility it could, but hopefully we, we won't get down that road. So uh, there's obviously some behind-the-scenes conversations going on. Uh, and what I hear from the Senate side is just what you described, Cameron, that uh, there's so much they feel like there's so much going on with the House piece that you might lose uh, if presented in the Senate. You might lose certain votes in the Senate. Similarly, I think, do you feel like as Speaker of the House that you need uh, this to be a more comprehensive reform package as opposed to just the scholarship piece uh, in order to make sure that you have the votes in the House? 
Look, the way we view it from the house is, is this is about the student, right? The number one goal is to have every student thrive, to have an opportunity to be successful. And that means a lot of things. Part of that is, is giving them the opportunity to have choice and in, 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 to go to a, a school of their choice, whether that could be a county the county school or whether that's a private school or a charter school. We believe that the student should have choice. And this bill is about uh, private choice, going to a private school. But at the same time, if we're truly about student, then we also need to look at the current K-12 through situation. Uh, Representative Sapicki has done a lot of research, and I applaud him for that, where it has showed that our state student population has decreased over the last so many years. I think it could be the last 12 or 15 he went through. So we have a declining student population already. We have increasing uh, state revenue uh, going into the school system, and our ACT scores are declining. And so we're looking at the numbers, and it doesn't take a lot to see that those relationships are not the or the, the, the graphs does not work. And so we're trying to do a thing to uh, to work for all students, whether you're currently in K through 12, where we know 90 percent of the students are going to stay or whether it's those students who are going to go to a private school. We want to improve education as a whole. And that's why we put in the reforms that we think that will get us there. How confident are you that this passes this session? I mean, I'm confident, but it, it takes, you know, it, as they say, it takes two to tango. So we'll see if, if both sides can um, well, become And, and, and m- most listeners, I mean, and, and we've talked to members of the House and we've talked to members of the Senate, and I think we have an, an idea of the differences between uh, – can you – can you give us a sense of what happens behind the scenes? I'm not asking for particulars, but how that happens. I mean, is it a matter of you in leadership and members of leadership or members of the Ed Committee or uh, working with the Senate to try to, I mean, is everybody getting in a room together or are you waiting to see how things shake out with the individual pieces? No, so, I mean, you, you, you always have meetings. I meet with the lieutenant governor, so we've had conversations. Uh, the two leaders, they have conversation. Our education chairs, they have conversations. Uh, there, there's been uh, one meeting where it wasn't uh, uh, a negotiation. It's just explaining our thought process. They were explaining their thought process. Um, but there's a lot of conversations member to member um, about uh, why we believe and what we are looking at. And, look, we understand that we may not get everything that we want. I mean, that's understandable. But, um, but you know, going through a prospect where, um, the potential is is the they got the house version is is not really the direction that we think we should go. It, it, we're either about improving the the students' performance regardless of what school they're in, and making sure that they have the best chance of having success is the direction we think we go. And and so we're hopeful that we can get there. Um, but there's a lot of conversations. There hasn't been really any formal negotiations take place. Hopefully. Uh, we can get a group together next week and, and talk about it and see if they, if anybody's willing to, to move. Scott and I uh, have spoken on this in the past, Representative Sapicki, but I, I want to uh, speak to you about it, Cameron. Some of the criticism, and the final question on the education piece, and then I'll move on to a couple of other things, but one of the pieces of criticism that I've heard from the right is that at least the fear, and, and, and maybe it's ignorant of the particulars of the bill, I don't know, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but the fear uh, that this gives the government of the state of Tennessee more ability to manipulate the private education system, more ability to uh, restrict or regulate the private education system. How do you, I'm sure you've heard these criticisms. How do you respond to them? Yeah, I mean, I, I get that the people have fear of the unknown. That's what I call it. Look, we, we don't, that's not the direction that we're going to go, that we want to go or that we're, we're going to do. And, and really, this this is about allowing a parent to use their tax dollars. We're not mandating that they have to do anything other than for the students who are on the scholarship, give us uh, their their assessments back, whether you use a, the Stanford or the Iowa or whether you use the TCAP, not for the whole body, but just for those so we can make sure uh, and monitor them, see how they're doing. I mean, outside of that, look, at the end of the day, this should be about having students who are going to achieve our goal is not to go in and take over private schools. That is not what we're doing. Actually, if you look at the House version, we're trying to get public schools to have more autonomy like private schools. That's what we're trying to get to. We're not trying to do the reverse at all. Cameron, um, b- before I have to say goodbye, obviously yesterday was um, a very somber day in the state of Tennessee. Uh, we 
uh, commemorate and remember the day that was March 27th, 2023. A year later, um, you know, sadly, I don't believe that it should be a partisan day. And I think for the most part, it wasn't uh, from a political standpoint or from a government uh, leadership standpoint. Uh, sadly, some of our friends on the left uh, made it a little partisan in as much as they suggested that, quote, the state has done nothing uh, to protect children a year later in the aftermath of the Covenant School. And I want you to respond to that. I, th- I think it's shameful that it even comes up, uh, but I think it merits a response by someone in your position of leadership that the state, quote unquote, has done nothing a year later. Yeah, I mean, I, I, that's not accurate. I, I think some of them are frustrated that, uh, I, I think as I heard some of them say on camera yesterday, that they want to ban certain weapons or uh, do other things that I don't think that the you have the votes to get there. And so I think they're frustrated. I think we have done stuff this year. We came back with a lot of things we passed in special session. And we passed them on the House side again, and the Senate's passing them again. So we've addressed mental health on two or three different bills. You know, uh, we have the background check, the uniform databases moving through the system. We finally have agreement, which we didn't have in special, with the clerks and the the sheriffs and the administrative office of the courts on a direction to go, which would be very beneficial, making sure that that the the background checks when you purchase a weapon are real-time and instantaneous. They're not like, uh, you know, nine months old getting records in there. And so we're making those progress. We're, we're, we are making progress. It's unfortunate. Uh, you know, sometimes, you know, they, they, there's certain things that, that, that the left wants that is not doable. Um, and, and so they want to point to those as, as in action when we've actually done a lot of action this year. Uh, Cameron, I noted that um, the Elvis Act was passed recently by the House and the Senate. I believe it's already been signed by the governor, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, congratulations on that front. I think we're leading in the in the United States of America, and rightly so, considering the number of artists, musicians, et cetera, uh, that live here in Nashville and, by extension, in the state of Tennessee. Kudos to that. Oh, absolutely. Look, we're, we're a music industry state. We have a lot of songwriters, a lot of performers, a lot of artists. Um, and, and they need to be protected, uh, their voice, their image. Um, uh, and, you know, at the, at the bill signing, you know, Chris Jansen and Luke Bryan got up and talked about how people have used AI and they had a hard time even uh, for them seeing that it wasn't them or listening and telling it wasn't their voice. So anything we can do to protect someone's intellectual property is, is a good thing. Uh, Cameron, thank you for your time. We always appreciate it. Thanks for your leadership in the General Assembly, and we will talk again very soon. Take care. Enjoy yes, the state. Just let me know. Just let me know in the remote for both of you to come up. And we're, we're on the um, well, look. We're on the golf course next time around. I appreciate it. There's Cameron Sexton. All right, what we'll do? We'll take a break a little early because I want I want uh, Representative Scott Spicky an opportunity to reflect on some of the commentary by Cameron Sexton specific uh, to the education bill. It's the Murphy Show on Super Talk. <laughs> 